Shall I not tell you of better saplings than these? I said, Yes, O Rasulullah. He said, Say Subhanallah, Glory be to Allah, who is above all faults. Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah. La ilaha illallah, none is worthy of worship but Allah. And Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. For each one of these words, a tree will be planted for you in paradise. Ibn Majah Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to us and said, Take your shields, Sahaba asked, O Rasulullah, has any of the enemy come? He said, Take your shields as a protection from the hellfire. Say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, and Wala hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no might to resist evil and no power to do good except through Allah. These words will come from the front, back, right and left and these are those good deeds for which the reward will be given eternally. Tabrani, Majmal, Bahrain Note, these words will come from the front implies that these words will come forward to intercede for him while back, right and left implies that these words will protect him from the punishment. Majmal, Bahrain Anas radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah and Allahu Akbar. This causes the sins to fall like leaves falling from the tree. Musnad Ahmad Imran ibn Hussain radiallahu anhuma narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Who amongst you can do a good deed every day equal to amount Uhud? Sahaba submitted. O Rasulullah, who has the ability to do good deed every day, like that of Uhud, he replied, Every one of you has the ability to do this. The Sahaba asked O Rasulullah, what is this? He said, the reward for Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah is more than Uhud. The reward for Allahu Akbar is also more than Uhud. Meaning for saying separately, Subhanallah, the reward is equal to Uhud. For saying Alhamdulillah, the reward is equal to Uhud. And similarly for saying La ilaha illallah, it is equal to Uhud. Tabrani, Bazaar, Majma'u Zawai. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, When you pass by the gardens of paradise, feed well. I inquired, O Rasulullah, what are the gardens of paradise? He replied, Masjids. I asked, O Rasulullah, what is the feed? He replied, to say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, and Allahu Akbar. Tirmizi. Abu Huraira and Abu Sayyid al Khudri radiallahu anhuma narrate that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah has chosen from his book four things Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. He who says Subhanallah, 20 virtues are written for him and 20 sins are erased. He who says Allahu Akbar, he gets the same reward. He who says La ilaha illallah, he also gets the same reward. And he who says from the depth of his heart, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all praise be to, the, to Allah, the Rabb of all the words. 30 virtues are written for him and 30 sins are erased. Amul al wa layla Abu Sayyid al-Khudri radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Excessively repeat the everlasting good deeds. It was asked, What are those everlasting good deeds, O Rasulullah? He replied, These are the fundamentals of deen. It was asked, What are these? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Say Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, 
ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله نوت ever lasting good deed implies those good deeds for which rewards will be given eternally the arabic word for al milla refers to the fact that these words have a fundamental significance in deen the hadith is from mustadrak hakim and explanation is from fathur rabbani abu darda radhiyallahu anhu narrates that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said say subhanallah alhamdulillah la ilaha illallah allah akbar and wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah these are from the everlasting good deeds which remove sins like the leaves shed from the trees these are from the treasures of paradise tabrani majmaul zabaid abdullah bin amr radhiyallahu anhuma narrates that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever says on earth la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah nan is worthy of worship but allah allah is the greatest there is no might to resist evil and no power to do good except through allah his sins are forgiven even if those are like the foam of the ocean tirmizi in another narration the same reward is with the addition of subhanallah glory be to allah who is above all faults and walhamdulillah all praise be to allah the hadith is from mustadrak hakim abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu narrates that he heard rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying whoever sincerely says subhanallah walhamdulillah wala ilaha illallah wallahu akbar wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah on this allah says my slave has become obedient and has surrendered himself to me mustadrak hakim Abu Sa'id Khudri and Abu Hurairah radhiyallahu anhuma both witnessed that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith Qudsi says whoever says la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar his rabb confirms and says none is worthy of worship but me and i am the greatest and when he says none is worthy of worship but allah the alone allah taala says none is worthy of worship but me and i am alone and when he says none is worthy of worship but allah the alone who has no partner allah taala says none is worthy of worship but me and i am alone and i have no partner and when he says none is worthy of worship but allah to whom belongs the kingdom and to whom all praise is due allah subhanahu wa taala says none is worthy of worship but me to me belongs the kingdom and to me all praise is due and when he says none is worthy of worship but allah and there is no might to resist evil and no power to do good except through allah allah taala says none is worthy of worship but me and there is no might to resist evil and no power to do good except through me rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whosoever says the above words in his illness and then dies the hell fire will not even taste or touch him tirmizi no it means that when anyone is suffering from illness and he says the following when the fire of hell will not even taste or touch him yaqub ibn asim rahimahullah narrates that two sahaba radhiyallahu anhuma heard rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying any slave of allah who says la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu almulk wa lahu alhamdu wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer none is worthy of worship but allah the alone without any partners his is the kingdom and his is all the praise and he has power over all things with the sincerity of his soul and his heart and testifies this with his tongue then the doors of the skies are open for him and allah looks at him and the one on whom allah casts a glance indeed becomes entitled to whatever he asks amul al yawm wal layla abdullah ibn amr radhiyallahu anhu narrates that nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the best supplication is the supplication on the day of arafa and the best words which i and the prophets before me have said is la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al mulku wa lahu al hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer tirmizi it is narrated that nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said 
Whosoever sends salawat on me once, Allah will bestow him with ten blessings and ten virtues will be written for him. Tirmizi Umair al-Ansari radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whosoever from my ummah sends salawat on me once with sincerity of his heart, Allah will bestow on him ten blessings, raise him by ten ranks, and write for him ten virtues, and also erase ten sins from him. Amul al-Yawma wal-Layla Abu Umama radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Send salawat excessively upon me on every Friday, for the salawat on my ummah are presented to me on every Friday. He who invokes salawat excessively on me will be amongst the closest to me in rank on the day of resurrection. Bayhaqi Targhib Anath radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Send salawat excessively upon me on Friday, for Jibra'il alayhi salam has just come to me with a message from my Rabb, Azzawajal, when any Muslim on the earth sends salawat upon you, once I bestow upon him ten blessings and my angel seeks forgiveness for him ten times. Tabrani Tarqib Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The closest to me from my ummah on the day of resurrection will be the one who sent salawat on me excessively. Tirmizi Kaab radiallahu anhu narrates that when two-thirds of the night had passed, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would get up and call out, O oh people, remember Allah, remember Allah, and trembler that will violently shake the mountains and earth is surely coming, and the one that follows it is surely coming. Death has come with all that it contains, and death has come with all that it contains. Upon this, Ubayy bin Ka'ab asked, O Rasulullah, I wish to send salawat on you excessively. How much should I devote for salawat on you? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, As much as you want. I asked, A quarter? He said, As much as you wish, but if you increase, it will be better for you. I asked, A half? He said, As much as you wish, but if you increase, it will be better for you. I asked, Two-third? He said, As much as you wish, but if you increase, it will be better for you. I asked, Should I devote all my time to send salawat on you? He said, If you do this, then Allah will free you from all worries and your sins will be forgiven. Tirmizi Note, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has warned us about the nearness of the day on the day of resurrection. Hence, people should not be neglectful of the hereafter. سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك سبحانك رب العزه اما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين لا اله الا الله محمد